basically um, who booked that test, what projects booked it, what resources they booked out, i.e. controllers, load generators, how many virtual users they reserved. So you can you get a view to what other people are doing with uh, with the test infrastructure, and you can see visually, um, you know, when your time slots are, when when you've got time booked out um, for those resources. And when you actually go to reserve a time slot, you simply uh, you get this pop up. You select the test that you want to run. It will automatically detect the number of virtual users and the time that you need. So you select the start time, or you click calculate availability, and it will show you the different start times where um, you can run the test. So when this um, was executed, you can see that the time they selected is not available, but it shows the times in the future where uh, resources are available. So all of that scheduling of the virtual users and the resources, the load generators, etc., is done by the booking system here. So those are some of the improvements to, to the interface in Performance Center 11. Um, So just to summarize, there's lots of new features, um, both in, in Load Runner and Performance Center. The Load Runner True Client is um, a very powerful scripting technology, um, mainly for AJAX applications, but also if you want uh, an easier, more graphical way of scripting against normal web applications. Uh, you have the, the multi-reporting, uh, which makes it much quicker and easier to get uh, different types of reports out. And then Performance Center, very big changes there with it being merged and ported onto the, the ALM platform. Lots of new capabilities, requirements and defects, version control. Um, so if Performance Center isn't something you've seen before, it might be um, that uh, that sparked your interest, then you might want to look at it in more detail. Um, just a quick summary of the other benefits you get from Performance Center there. Um, being able to pull your licenses together and schedule the use of your controllers um, remotely. Great if you're working uh, on a global basis with offshore resources. So you'll have uh, these slides to refer to um, afterwards. So that's all from me. Um, thank you very much for your time. And I hope that's uh, been an interesting session. And uh, if you've got any questions, please um, raise them in the, the Q&A box. And uh, we'll be more than happy to uh, address them. Marvelous. Um, thank you very much, Jonathan, and also thank you, Thomas, uh, for um, a great presentation. Um, as Jonathan did mention, we are now taking questions. Um, if you do have any particular questions to both Jonathan and Thomas, please do type, do type them on your question pod, and we will take maybe a few questions, and then um, if we run out of time, maybe take it offline. So please do. Uh, put your, your questions through and then if we can't answer it now we will do it offline and I'll get Jonathan or Thomas to so email you guys individually. Um, if you have any questions please do type in do type them now. I have one question. Um, I'm, I've got a question from, uh, from Steve. Um, the question is, what is a, the AJAX request in Load Runner? Um, shall I put this with you, Thomas? Yeah, that's fine. I'll take it. Um, okay, just briefly, um, AJAX is uh, not actually using the uh, normal um, get and put request. Um, it's actually using an XML HTTP uh, request method. Um, which is used to make a request to the server. And uh, because it's synchronous, it's actually dynamically, uh, as Jonathan mentioned, it's dynamically updating the web page, basically, without uh, refreshing it. Great, marvelous. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, I've got one question. Um, I'll just choose from one from, from, from the list here. Um, there's lots of tools of performance testing. By but why Load Runner um, is the best? Um, Jonathan, would, would you want to take that? Or? Sure, yeah. Um, well, f first of all, um, I mean, Load Runner has been around longer than any of the other tools, so it's a very mature product. Um, it's over 15 years old now, and, and it still has, and has had for the last kind of 10 years, around between 60 to 70 percent of, of the market share of performance testing tools. So as well as being very mature, um, it's also very well known in the industry. It's very easy to get resources who, who know Load Runner. 
Um, we've also got a lot of research and development into load runner technology, a lot of investment behind the tool. So any new technologies that come out, as you've seen with, with the load runner true client, we're, um, you know, we're dedicated and committed to supporting these new technologies and to making sure LoadRunner uh, can work with the technologies that our customers um, are using. Um, so, so I guess those are the reasons why I, I suggest LoadRunner would be um, a tool to use. You also have um, integration with, I mentioned HP Diagnostics very briefly, um, but that's a very powerful integration um, when you're running a performance test if you see a transaction response time uh, as I mentioned, something like search, for instance, has taken 10, 20 seconds. You want to know what's behind that. If you're using HP Diagnostics, there's a direct integration between the Diagnostics tool and Load Runner and Performance Center, so you can drill down on that transaction response time, and you can actually then see the call profile of the application behind that. So you see the different J2E methods, for instance, that are being called, and you can see visually um, how long each of those methods is taking, and if there's any SQL behind one of those calls, you can see exactly what that SQL is. So as a tester, you can go down to that method level and you can go back to a developer and say, it's actually this Java method that's taking up the time. Could you have a look at that? So you're giving much better information to the developers to, to look into bottlenecks and try and resolve them. So I'd say those are, those are the key advantages of Lodrana. Marvelous. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, I've got another question. I think it's to do with uh, Ajax. Um, I think, uh, Thomas, this is for you. Does Ajax True Client allow you to still view the script in script view? Do you want to take that, Jonathan? Yeah. Um, as Jonathan um, demonstrated, the, uh, you, you manage everything through the web browser, uh, through the Firefox, and uh, it is possible to actually add a um, J script, JavaScript, um, through, the light, uh, through the panel, which is on the left-hand side of the browser. Uh, you can see the, the script use actually recording the script with um, uh, clicking script, um, but as I said, the main management is done through the web browser. Perfect. Thank you, Thomas. Um, another one from uh, James. It says, does the load runner support web applications running on IE9? Uh, Jonathan, do you want to take that? Sure. Um, currently, no. Um, load runner doesn't support IE9 at the moment. Um, that will be uh, a development in the next version, I believe. Perfect. Wait, um, I've got quite a long one for, for I think it's for you, Jonathan. Um, it says, I am, am I surprised by the reported limitation on recording 64-bit applications? And I hope I am misunderstood. We have a 64-bit apps on a 64-bit operating system and would want to screen scrape the user actions where possible. I think, Jonathan, <laughs> This is for you, definitely. Yeah, yeah. At the moment, that that's, yeah, we can't do that. Um, Loadrun is still a 32-bit application. Um, again, the next version uh, will, will change, but at the moment, it's a 32-bit application, so it can't interact, unfortunately, with 64-bit um, applications. So if you're running 32-bit apps on a 64-bit OS, then that's fine, but unfortunately, at the current time, we don't support 64-bit applications. Marvelous. Thanks, Jonathan. I'll take a uh, few more, just maybe two more before um, we finish off and take some of the questions offline. Uh, I've got one here. Do you differentiate LoadRunner True Client? How, sorry, how do you differentiate LoadRunner True Client with Selenium IDE? Uh, Thomas, with Jonathan? Jonathan? Mm. Do you want to take that, Jonathan? Or? Uh, I'm not familiar with no. the Selenium IDE, and okay. I'm afraid so I can't really comment. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Okay, another one for you, I think, uh, Johnson. Uh, do you need a QC license to run Performance Center? Uh, no, you don't. Um, QC is, you get the QC interface as part of Performance Center, um, and there, you'll have two, two server entities. There'll be a QC server, effectively, and a PC server. Uh, these can all be virtualized, but part of that Performance Center license or is, is the core technology, the underlying, what we call the ALM platform, which will be that QC server. So, no, you don't need a separate license. The Performance Center license covers it all. Marvelous. And I'll just take one more, and then if we can take some of the questions offline, guys. Uh, I know it's, it's pretty late at the moment. Um, I've got a question here. The true client protocol you showed us was using Firefox browser. Does it also work with Internet Explorer? Um, I think maybe, Jonathan? Yeah, sure. Good question. Um, it doesn't. The, the reason for that being um, Microsoft uh, 
uh, you know, Internet Explorer is quite locked down. Um, the technology used in, in the true client uh, scripting, uh, as I mentioned, there's a number of patents involved in that. It's using very clever technology, and, and luckily Firefox is, um, or by design, I guess, Firefox is, is more open to those kind of technologies. So um, it was relatively straightforward to develop that for, for Firefox. But Microsoft wouldn't give us the, the ability to do that. So at the moment, it's just um, on Firefox. That doesn't mean if, you're, you know, if your organization doesn't use Firefox, that doesn't mean you can't use true client scripting. Um, if your application will run in Firefox, then you can script against it. When you replay that script back, you know, you're not testing the client browser, so it's not a case that it's going to be inaccurate because you're using IE. You're actually testing the server, so you're testing the responses of the server. So it's, it's, partic um, you know, it's valid to use that technology even if your organization isn't using Firefox. Um, but on the IE support, uh, the next release of LoadRunner, um, again, will probably have support for TrueClient within IE, and that will be based on IE 9, which has much more open extensibility than, than IE 8 does. So uh, that kind of technology will be coming in in IE 9. And uh, LoadRunner 12 is, is kind of well on uh, the development path at the moment. So uh, the, the release cycles are typically 18 months now, and LoadRunner 11 was released um, seven or eight months ago, so expect within 10 to 12 months that the next version will be uh, coming around. Marvelous. Thank you so much. Um, thank you guys for, for, for coming again for, for this webinar. Um, before we go, if you do have any further questions regarding the webinar or want to know more about our service offerings, uh, including our consultancy, scoping exercises, free consultations, or software reselling, and more within HP's LoadRunner, please do give us a call. Our details are on the slide now. Uh, all I have to do is say thank you all very much for joining us and um, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.